It is a new low today, a new 52-week low. Speaking of stocks that have been in a downtrend, hitting new 52-week lows seemingly every day, if not every other. There it is, down near 14% today, getting back towards $100 a share. Hitting new 52-week lows seemingly every day, if not every other. There it is, down near 14% today, getting back towards $100. sold another block of Tesla shares worth almost $3.6 billion. An SEC filing shows the EV maker CEO unloaded at least 22 million shares. It's set to put further downward pressure on Tesla stock, which has plunged 55% this year. All right, today is Tuesday, January 3rd, and this is a recap for the stock market activities today. Folks, I got a good one for you tonight. Let's start by this. The Grinch never left town, but he might be on his way. Let's hope for that, at least uh, for the sake of the bulls, because um, they're really depressed right now. And of course, on the other side, the bears say, let it burn, crash it all. And I say to the bears, you're gonna get your wish, because 2022 was the appetizer, and this year, 2023, will be served the main course. Yet when we look back at the year that was 2022, and it was an eventful year, all about the Fed, all about inflation. When it comes to the stock market, which stock can summarize the entire year? If you had to pick one stock to tell the story of 2022, I would have said Meta all the way until December. But the loss of wealth in Meta pale in comparison with the loss of wealth in Tesla. The fastest and most dramatic loss of wealth in history. Never happened before. Almost a trillion dollars. Poof gone and oh, we're just getting started baby so if i had to choose one stock to tell the story of 2022 i would choose tesla and of course we know that 23 the story would be apple but for now since we're talking about 22 and the recap of the year that was what's going to happen in the year that is we have to talk about tesla aka the souffle so let's do that and here it is in focus tonight Ouch. The fastest and the largest loss of wealth in history. But let's start by this. Remember back in the day when uh, Tesla was worth more than all of automobile manufacturers combined? And back then, the Tesla culties, Elon fans and the likes, they were saying that this insane valuation was justified because Tesla's going to make the robo taxis. Tesla will make UFOs. Elon, he's smart, he knows. And us, the critics and the bears, we said, it doesn't make sense. And sooner or later, once the hype is exposed and once the fundamentals start to weaken, this thing will be crushed like a souffle under a hammer. These are not my words. These are the words of Reverend Elon Musk, who, of course, the Tesla culties worship. And when Tesla was on its heyday of the insane valuation, they said that Tesla will hit $15,000 a share, which will make it worth more than Apple, Meta, Microsoft, and every other company combined. Total lunacy. And now, of course, we know that this is not going to happen. It was stupid to begin with, and it remains stupid. And this valuation of Tesla right now, even after the crash, remains absolutely insane. This is an automobile manufacturer and nothing more. And it should be valued as an automobile manufacturer, maybe with a slight bump in valuation because it is still growing versus GM, Ford, and the likes. And here in this channel, we've been saying that Tesla will face 
the same fate as Qualcomm back in 2000. Did the insanity will come down crashing? And did the mom and pop investors listen? Of course not. Some of you did, but the majority attacked this channel and called us a boomer. You're just jealous, bro. You're jealous of, of the gains. You're losing a lot of money shorting Tesla. Meanwhile, your boy, the Maverick of Wall Street, the only YouTuber, matter of fact, the only analyst on the planet who's looking out for your little booty. And about three months ago, I said, Tesla bulls, this is your last warning. Get the hell out because this is about to crash. At least, for the love of God, buy some puts, buy some insurance, and hedge your positions. And guess what? Some of the Tesla culties actually happen to be members of this channel because they know that I'm the only guy looking out for the little booties. And some of them actually thank me. They say you saved my ass. I listened to your advice. I took some profits. I bought some puts. And I dodged a massive bullet. And in that video, we talked about my thesis on why Tesla stock is going to crash. And I presented the fundamental case, but most importantly, the technical case. Now, when we talk about charts, the shorter the time range you go to, for example, the one minute chart, the three minute, the five, even the daily, those can be deceiving because you can read them one way and you get surprised that your reading was wrong for whatever reason. But the longer range charts, specifically the monthly charts, they don't lie. They tell a story and they predict how it's going to end even before the fundamentals. And in the case of Tesla, the souffle, the monthly chart was always pointing out for a topping head and shoulder formation. And since that video was released, the head and shoulder formation did play out and it produced a loss of about 60%. Absolute insanity. We have never seen such a loss of wealth this fast ever before. And uh, the boomers and the bears you were making fun of, well, they walked away with $14 billion since Elon Musk bought Twitter. The gains since the beginning of 22 in the hundreds of billions of dollars. You see, money doesn't disappear in a black hole. When you long a stock and you lose your money, the money transfers hands. It goes from the longs to the shorts. So if you're wondering where your money went, it's in the pockets of bears. But of course, the staggering loss of wealth is not going to to deter the zombies and the culties of Tesla. They continue to buy the dip even though the stock lost over $700 billion. On the other hand, what is Reverend Elon, the cult leader, doing? Well, if you read the headlines, it says that he lost over $200 billion. So you might say, hey, I might have lost my money in Tesla, but so did Reverend Elon. In reality, Reverend Elon did not lose anything at all. He lost $200 billion in paper money, but he cashed in over $40 billion in real money, liquid cash, dumping on your little heads. You buy, Elon sells. Does it make sense at all to buy a stock when the CEO of the company is dumping it? But this is the type of lunacy and insanity that we've seen in Tesla and many other stocks. But of course, we know that a lot of mom and pops, and this is not funny, a lot of mom and pop investors, regular folks, lost their entire life savings investing in Tesla. And they're lashing out at Elon Musk on Twitter and the likes, and Elon Musk lashed out back at them, saying, you know what, you're not happy, you lost your money, it's because you're stupid. I don't really care about you. Suggesting that you should read your old security analysis 101 textbook. Ouch. When your cut leader is saying the valuation doesn't make sense at all, read your securities analysis 101 textbook. What is he saying really? He's saying I read the book and I know this thing is going to crash. I know that this stock is valued insanely and this is not sustainable. It's going down and therefore I'm cashing out. On the other hand, the mom and pops continue to dig in and buy the dip over and over and over again. And it's not just the mom and pop investors who are losing their shirts here. It's also the workers of Tesla, who to begin with, at least a lot of them chose to work at Tesla because of the hype, because of the power of the brand, because of Elon Musk, and most importantly, because of the stock. Now that the stock is down, they're losing big time. And Elon says, don't be bothered by the stock market craziness. The stock market can go up or down, but I'm dumping right now. And maybe this is why the stock keeps going down. In an email, Elon Musk thanked Tesla employees for their work in 2022. He also encouraged them to push hard for a strong fourth quarter finish and asked them to volunteer to help deliver cars to customers before midnight December 31st if possible. In other words, I know that you guys are losing money. I know that the stock is down, but keep working slaves. Keep delivering. Is this really a culture that you want to work in? This is the problem for Tesla among many others. And we're going to talk about them in details in a minute. But in lashing out against dissatisfied investors, the Rev warns not to use margin debt. 
I would really advise people not to have margin debt in a volatile stock market and you know, from a cash standpoint, keep powder dry. Musk said in the All In podcast released Friday, you can get some pretty extreme things happening in a down market. Why aren't you people taking the advice of your own cult leader who's staying in cash, who's raising cash by dumping stock, who's keeping dry powder. What's going on here? Isn't this obvious to everybody? When the cult leader is dumping, it's time to get out. But here's the problem. The crash in Tesla is quite unusual because the stock has become really, really oversold. And usually we get rebounds, big ones, short covering rallies, gamma squeezes, etc, etc. But this stock continues to crash in a dramatic scale. And my hunch is we're seeing massive margin calls happening as we speak. And here's the surprise. While Reverend Elon is warning against using margin debt, guess what? He used a lot of margin debt. And now, as the headline reads, Elon Musk faces margin call on loan used to to purchase Twitter. Uh oh. In other words, the Rev himself is getting margin called. And is this the reason behind the dramatic crash? In Tesla stock? My hunch is, yes it is. If that is the case, it could get even uglier than we have already seen. And the problem in Tesla stems at least in my opinion, from the following. Forget about the margin calls right now. We have fundamental problems that we've been talking about for perhaps months in certain cases years, and these problems can be summarized as number one, the quality issues that Tesla is suffering from, number two, the competition in China, number three, the high input cost to produce souffles, number four, the oversupply problem, which I've been talking about and predicting for a while now, and lastly, the problem with Elon Musk and the brand of Tesla. Let's talk about these one by one and we start with the quality issues. We know that when it comes to the quality issues for Tesla, sometimes they catch on fire randomly and it takes an insane amount of water to put these fires down. But the majority of the recent problems we've been getting from Tesla is the self-driving software, which malfunctions. We have seen crashes here in this country, in China, all over the place. Some, unfortunately, caused fatalities. We all heard the story, for example, of uh, the Tesla owner who says that his car would not charge in freezing temperatures, leaving him stranded on Christmas Eve. And the guy didn't even fly southwest. And rumor has it, this Tesla owner had to hail a buggy to reach his destination by Christmas. That's how reliable Tesla cars are. And now, finally, we're getting some movement from the company to contain these quality the issues. They're now using Tom Zhu, who's the China chief at the Shanghai plant, to manage the entire production for the company because the quality issues are getting out of hand. Now, of course, the stock didn't care, continued to move higher despite all of these quality issues. But we've been saying in this channel, when it rains, it pours. And all what you need is that little break in confidence. And then all of these problems that the stock didn't care about before will be amplified. And this is exactly what we're seeing. And for the newbies in this channel, Old viewers would tell you, I've been saying, what's going to crash this stock, Tesla, is something personal about Elon Musk. And we now know that his Twitter involvement was the straw that broke the camel's back. And now all of a sudden these quality issues are being amplified. And every time we get some of these negative headlines about Tesla's catching fire or malfunctions in the self-driving program, we see shares diving down big time. Something we haven't seen before. Now let's talk about the competition in China because a lot of us Tesla critics have been saying, hey, at some point, GM, Ford, Stellantis, the Japanese auto manufacturers, the European auto manufacturers, all of them are going to start producing EVs. And what would be so special about Teslas then? Because Tesla fans have been saying that GM and Ford are dinosaurs. They're never going to catch up to Teslas. But that was a false assumption to begin with. And we now know that despite the quality issues that we have in the Mustang Mac e for example, or any GM EV vehicles, Tesla is not really that special. It might be ahead of the competition for now, but the competition is catching up really, really fast. And that is a major problem for Tesla. Why? Because it offers the consumer who's looking for EVs other choices. That reduces the demand. Without demand, prices go down for Teslas and the valuation becomes unjustified. And this is exactly what we're seeing right now. Perhaps the most important market for Tesla is China. And while Tesla is facing insane competition in that country, for example, BYD reported today that their sales more than doubled in December, meaning we're seeing the growth shifting from Tesla to domestic auto manufacturers in China, in this case, electric vehicle manufacturers, BYD, as an example. On top of that, 
Tesla is facing a lot of problems in China due to the Thing lockdowns, which led to the suspension of production in the Shanghai plant. Now, this will push Tesla behind the competition even further in China. Problem number three, the high input cost. You can look at the prices of nickel or cobalt, but most importantly, lithium. Lithium prices now that we're having the prolification of EVs, European manufacturers, US manufacturers, Japanese manufacturers, everybody is competing on the same resource. And this is why I dubbed it as the EV lunacy, because the transition to EVs should have been gradual and should have been planned. Part of the planning is developing mines for lithium. Unfortunately, in this country, the pushers for the EV mania didn't even bother developing lithium plants before forcing all of us to buy EVs or else. What is the result of all of that? The result is lithium prices, specifically in China, which by the way, we buy our lithium from China since we haven't developed those mines. So the EV lunacy is good for China, not good for the USA. In any case, China lithium carbonide prices are sky high, and this will cost Tesla an arm and a leg. Now, if the input cost rises higher, but the demand for souffles remains high and intact, there is no problem. Tesla can continue to raise prices higher and higher and higher to cover for the input cost increases. But here's the problem that leads us to number four, oversupply. Or we can look at it as a decline in demand. Let me refresh your memory about the mania of flipping Teslas back in the summer, and then we come back. Take a look. I'm sure you've heard of house flipping. Well, there's a new trend that's driving car owners looking to make some extra cash. CBS's Carter Evans takes a look at car flipping. The rules of the road are changing. How much did you pay for that out the door with taxes? I think like 87, 600. Dennis Wang just bought a brand new Tesla five months ago, but the offer he just got from a dealer is too good to pass up. And they gave you how much? 101 thousand dollars <laughs> it absolutely insane mind blown the dealer paid off the rest of his loan and wang walked away with a check for almost seventeen thousand dollars in the last two years i've been driving brand new cars and and have not lost a cent eddie gribbist flipped his car for five thousand dollars more than he paid for it nine months and this is how much it appreciated Tesla says it may unilaterally cancel any order we believe was made with a view toward resale. And that's exactly what happened to Dennis Wang's next car. My orders for Tesla's actually has been deleted. So they're really just trying to protect the customers and of course themselves at the end of the day. So the demand for Tesla's was so insane that folks were buying these Tesla's to flip them for a profit right away. And this is all good when we see the demand rising higher, prices rise higher, and we see the flipping phenomenon happening. We have seen this in the housing market too, but here's the problem. You might have heard that Tesla reported the fourth quarter deliveries, and while it was a decent number, it missed estimates by a lot. In other words, we're seeing a slowdown in deliveries. Okay, Maverick, maybe this is because the lockdowns in China, the production was slow, etc., etc. But there was another problem that says perhaps the deliveries are disappointing not because of lockdowns or shutdowns in plants. The deliveries are bad as an indicator of a slowdown in demand. The evidence is Tesla is now offering U.S. consumer $7,500 to take deliveries of souffles. Tesla is now saying, we're going to pay you to take these cars. What's going on here? I'll tell you what's going on. With the mania, the inflation that we've seen, and the overhiring and overpaying of workers, specifically in the tech industry, all of them, once they secure these large salaries, 100,000 plus. Of course, in California, 100,000 is uh, poverty wage, but tech workers get paid half a million dollars plus in certain cases. We have seen a stampede in buying Teslas. And with the mania in the stock market and the housing market and everybody's wealth rising higher, a lot of folks also bought Teslas. I shared the example of uh, one spoiled brat uh, daughter that we have in this family. Not my daughter, but somebody else's daughter. But anyways, she threatened her parents. Either you buy me a Tesla or I'm not going to drive any other car. I'm not going to go to college. I need to go to college. I have to drive a car. And it has to be a Tesla. And of course, the parents, because they're such good parents, of course, and I say that sarcastically, they did buy her a Tesla. They caved in and they paid whatever they paid and they bought their daughter a Tesla. And of course, within four months, she crashed the car. Now, if that was my daughter, I would say, hey, what's wrong with the bus? It worked for me. It should work for you. But the moral of the story is now that tech stocks crashed, that the stock market crashed, real estate valuations have stalled, and soon enough they're going to crash too. That led to a lot of layoffs in the tech industry, number one. And it led to a lot of losses in portfolios, a lot of loss in wealth to a lot of these folks who bought Teslas 
in a stampede. So what happens now? If you're a tech worker, you don't have a job anymore. What do you need a car for? They're dumping and selling their Teslas. A lot of folks who can no longer afford the payments are also getting rid of their Teslas. And now we have a problem of oversupply. Now remember, Tesla continues to pay insane prices for lithium carbonite, meaning their input cost continues to increase higher, but they can no longer enjoy the pricing power. They have to actually reduce their prices down because we have an oversupply problem. What does that lead to? It leads to margins getting crushed. And the result of that is even Tesla, the company, is now freezing hiring and issuing a new round of layoffs. And that leads us to last but not least, the fifth problem of Elon Musk slash the brand. What are we talking about here? You see, back when I used to criticize Tesla, let's say about three years ago, my liberal friends, and most of my friends are liberal because I live in California, they would say, what do you have against Elon Musk? He's a genius. He's an innovator. He is saving the planet with all of these solar panels and uh, electric cars. What do you got against Elon Musk? What do you got against Tesla? And I would say, I don't know, the man rubs me as a fraud, number one. And number two, this whole Tesla thing is an overhype, but they will stick to their ground and defend Elon and Tesla. Until recently, of course, when Elon Musk decided to buy Twitter. And on top of that, decided to reveal his political positions, which to say, they're not really liberal, to say the least. Now, the vast majority of EV buyers happen to be liberal, happen to be Democrats. And when you reveal your political positions to be the opposite, you're going to alienate your core consumers. This is exactly what Elon Musk did. And this is a piece from the New York Times written by um, propagandist economist Paul Krugman. But he's right here by saying how to destroy a brand Musk style. I can tell you from my own experience, I have a lot of friends who say, I regret owning a Tesla. I'd like to sell my Tesla. I was looking to buy an EV, a Tesla, but I changed my mind. I'm now going with the Ford or the GM or Mercedes or whatever. And the number one reason they give is Elon Musk. They no longer like Elon Musk. And this is a major, major problem when the core consumers of the company are no longer looking to buy these cars. Matter of fact, they're looking to dump their cars and switch to another brand. You got to remember this. A huge part of the overvaluation of Tesla was due to the Tesla brand and Elon Musk. Elon is a genius. He's an innovator. These cars are just the beginning. You have to look to the leap forward for this company, Tesla, what they're going to do in space, what they're going to do in public transportation, what they're going to do in energy and robotics, etc., etc. This perception has changed right now. The perception of Elon Musk as a genius innovator to, um, I don't know, a right-wing uh, political figure. That's how they see it, folks. This is how the majority of Tesla consumers who happen to be liberal see Elon Musk right now. And this is costing the company the brand cushion that pushed the valuation higher and higher and higher in the past. On top of that, this whole Twitter fiasco is another trap that unfortunately Elon Musk fell for. To begin with, it's the dumbest deal in history. There hasn't been a business deal this dumb since the Big Bang, and the troubles with Twitter continue. We have said before in this channel that this will be the beginning of the end of Elon Musk. It's a trap. He shouldn't buy Twitter. He should get the hell out because this is going to cost him a lot. And right now, we're seeing that he overpaid for Twitter. It's not worth $54 billion. It's worth nothing. The company is not producing enough revenue to keep the lights on. To the point where Elon Musk, of course, you might have heard, fired thousands of workers. And now he has to fire janitors and force staff to bring their own toilet paper and clean up after themselves to save money. On top of that, Elon Musk stopped paying rent. No more rent payment because the company's not making any money. And now he's getting sued by the landlord for not paying rent. The uh, super thackle Dan Ives, who's another hack, he suggests that to save Tesla, Elon Musk must stop step down from the leadership role in Twitter because the company is on track to lose $4 billion. As Twitter continues to bleed cash, Elon Musk has to dump more shares of Tesla to raise that cash. And this is a bad, bad combination. But fortunately or unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, I'll explain in a minute, Elon Musk did a poll whether he should stay as CEO of Twitter or not. The majority said he should step down. And now Elon Musk is actively looking for somebody to assume the role of CEO of Twitter. And I say to whoever going to lead this company, good luck.
because it's going down in the dumps. Elon Musk complains that running Twitter is a drain on his life savings and a lot of pain. Life savings such as the $40 billion you just cashed out? Anyways, Elon's brand and reputation is also dumping down just like his stock. He promised to bring freedom of speech, no restrictions at all on Twitter. Free speech absolutist. But then he banned accounts for doxing and revealing somebody's location. Maybe understandable, maybe not. But he offered evidence on why he is doing this, presenting us with a video of an uh, alleged stalker to his uh, kid. But of course, now the police says that Elon Musk and his security team are not the victim in this crazy stalker incident. They're actually the suspect. And then Elon Musk got into uh, the whole legalization of cocaine. I mean, this is going in a rabbit hole. It's a disaster. Every time this man speaks, Every time this man issues an opinion, it is a disaster from a brand perspective. We're talking, of course, about the Tesla brand. Forget about the Twitter brand. It has none. Now look, in the question of whether Elon Musk should step down from the Twitter CEO role or not, and maybe concentrate and focus on Tesla, and that should solve the problem, I disagree. I think the damage is done. I think Elon stepping down from the CEO role in Twitter and remain a CEO of Tesla is a major, major mistake because the damage to the brand is already done. He's not going to save Tesla by saying, okay, folks, you got me. I'm not going to talk about politics anymore. Matter of fact, I'm not going to be leading Twitter anymore. Please buy Tesla shares. Please buy Teslas. Not going to happen at this point. And frankly speaking, he should have his own opinion. If he wants to talk about politics, you should have the freedom to do so. But there are consequences in doing so. And therefore, I say that I would like to see Elon Musk continue as a CEO of Twitter, finish the job, stay focused in delivering for Twitter and delivering free speech, fix Twitter, don't be distracted and fulfill your promises. No funny business anymore banning accounts because of this or that and hire a new CEO for Tesla. At the end of the day, the engineers are the ones who built Tesla and the engineers have the talent and they have the skills to lead this company. And in doing so, at least Elon Musk is not going to be associated with the Tesla brand anymore. And maybe that would minimize the damage at this point. And my hunch is the moment Elon Musk announces that he's stepping down from his role as Tesla CEO, not Twitter CEO, we will see a massive short covering rally in Tesla shares. We might see some recovery in the damage done to the brand. And before we move on, of course, I offended a lot of Tesla fans, Elon fans, the culties, etc. But look, I feel your pain. I've been short Tesla for a long time, but recently I switched to buying calls, meaning betting that the stock will move higher. And my thesis is at some point, this pain will force Elon Musk to step down and hire a new CEO for Tesla. And that would be the catalyst for a massive short squeeze rally. So far, this rally has not happened. And in a day like this, like today, when the shares are down over 10% in a single day, I'm also feeling a lot of pain. But my pain, of course, pales in comparison with Tesla shareholders who invested their life savings, hundreds of thousands of dollars, or even millions of dollars, and they're now looking at massive, massive losses. I have no words to comfort you here. Besides, lesson learned. And what do you do from this point on? I say if you've been holding and you suffered all of this pain, what do you got to lose? You gotta wait for this short covering rally to happen, and that short covering rally will be an opportunity to dump and get out at a better price. Because this correction in valuation for Tesla is not over yet. We are just getting started here. And that is the message of the day. And with that, folks, let's move on to the coverage of the stock market. We begin with the closing of the indices today. And uh, here we go. The Dow Industrial Average down by 10.88 points or a decline of 0.03% almost on the flat line. The Nasdaq down by 79.5 points or a decline of 0.76%. The S&P also down by 15.36 points or a decline of 0.40%. We will look at the sector's performances for the day. Leading the pack at number one, capturing the gold, the silver, and the bronze, communication services. We have names such as Disney, Verizon, all bouncing higher, and therefore communication services took the lead today. Meanwhile, the laggards led by energy and technology. Now, why is energy leading the pack to the downside? Is it beginning of the year selling of the winners and booking profits to avoid taxes last year? Perhaps. Is it because China lockdowns again because energy moves higher when we have good news about China ending lockdowns. Today, we did not get any major news from China, yet energy is down. Is it the recession theme? And if that is the case, then why are we seeing utilities down? Why are we seeing industrials and communication services leading the pack? I say today in energy at least, 
for today. We'll see what happens in the reminder of the week. But today was profit taking day in energy, and that is done for taxation purposes. When we look at the advance to decline ratios, believe it or not, it was split 50-50. The NYSE 51% advancing versus 47% declining. The NASDAQ 50% advancing versus 47% declining. In other words, the reason why you're seeing the SPY and the NASDAQ down, it's due to Apple and Tesla being down big today. But a lot of other names did pretty good. Matter of fact, rallied today. We'll talk more about this in the heat map analysis. But before we do that, how about the futures for commodities? Down across the board as the dollar rebounds significantly higher. Gains of about 1% for the day. And therefore, commodities are down, led by energy. So this is another thought for you. Maybe it's not selling for taxation purposes. Maybe it's not profit taking. Maybe. It's just the dollar popping higher. On the other hand, if that is the case, then how do you explain the fact that gold also rallied higher? Lots of mixed messages today, so we have to wait for further clarity. We're seeing massive declines for energy commodities, be it crude oil, WTI, Brent, all down more than 3% for the day. So did gasoline, but of course, the massive crash in natural gas continues, with losses of over 11.5% in a single day today. What is the reason behind the crash in natural gas? What they attribute this crash to, at least for now, is the fact that we're seeing a warmer winter across the Atlantic and Europe. But the season is still young. We have seen a massive winter storm in this country. If it happens in Europe, you will see a massive rally in natural gas. And the reason is, they're going to run out of their supplies. And unless we have a peace deal with Russia, or the Europeans buy Russian natural gas again, we're going to see another massive rally for natural gas. Mark my words. It's going to happen. And the reason is, at this point, we're not going to have peace with Russia. The Europeans are not going to buy natural gas from Russia again, at least not anytime soon. Which means sooner or later, they're going to have to tap off the reserves buying US LNG. And this will push natural gas prices in this country higher. Stagflation will be the theme of this year. We have another run. This is not over yet. But today, with the rally in the dollar, we see declines across the board for soft commodities. We also have declines for the majority of meat commodities grains commodities all down but the mystery here is metal commodities yes we have declines for copper and palladium yet we have gains of over one percent for gold silver platinum so who's telling the truth here is it gold or is it the u.s dollar we're going to continue this conversation in the charts analysis but for now we have to move on And we're moving on to the big casino, the options market. What do we see here in terms of the hottest tables for the day? At number one, has been the number one for a while now, Tesla, the souffle, with around three and a half million contracts traded today. About 51% of those were calls. So we're seeing folks seeing this massive crash in Tesla as an opportunity for an upcoming rebound. Different story in Apple. And therefore, I say you might want to go long Tesla for a trade at least and stay short Apple because the name traded about 1.8 million contracts contracts today, about 56% of those were puts, not calls. Amazon at number three with around 800,000 contracts traded today, about 52% of those were calls. Now, when we talk about Tesla, why was it down big today? We covered the fundamental analysis in the in-focus segment. We covered the technical analysis many times before, but we also have a mechanical reason. This mechanical reason is known as reverse gamma squeeze. When we look at calls with the expiration date of this Friday, the highest volume we've seen is for the 110 calls, about 74,000 contracts traded for these calls. Impressive number, but it pales in comparison with the puts. The hottest contract was the 100 puts. It traded about 145,000 contracts. So the forces of gravity is on the side of puts. More folks are trading puts, flipping them, buying in the morning, closing in the afternoon, and this is causing a reverse gamma squeeze pushing the shares down. But in reading all of this, what is the message here? They're looking for the round number. They're looking for Tesla to hit 100 and then start to short cover. Now, usually, not always, but usually, we see the shares bottoming and rebounding higher before hitting the round number, in this case, 100. Why? Because a lot of traders start to cover and start to get out of the trade in anticipation of hitting this number. And when we have the herd mentality, that causes the name to bottom and rebound higher before 100 is hit. Now, when we move on to the unusual activities that took place in the casino today, we have the ticker, the obvious one, TSLA Tesla. And of course, the 
they bought the 100 puts, which is the hottest contract by far, but this time around for the expiration date of January 20, with expectations that Tesla could move down and lose more than 7.5% of its value by then. They paid around 4 bucks and 20 cents apiece to enter this trade, all in all, spending around $11 million. And then what about the ticker FANG? Fang. No, we're not talking about the tech fang, we're talking about diamond back energy. And somebody see it moving down even further. And they bought the 124 puts for the expiration date January 20 with expectations that the name could lose more than 6% of its value by then. They paid around 2 bucks a piece to enter. This trade all in all spending around three and a half million dollars. And then what about the put spread for Apple? All for the expiration date of February 17th. They bought the 115 puts and sold the 110. And the expectations are that by the expiration date, Tesla will be down more than 8%, but not more than 12%. They paid around 3 bucks and 30 cents a piece for buying the 115 puts. Meanwhile, they received about 2 bucks and 20 cents a piece from selling the 110 puts. All in all, the entry cost is reduced to about 1 buck a piece, bringing the total to about $1.5 million. On to the heat map analysis, what do we see here? Believe it or not, the majority of stocks were in the green, but we have major losers here. The obvious ones, Apple and Tesla. Tesla, which I've been saying all along, these will be the last two blocks to fall. And that, by the way, will not mark the end of the bear market. It will mark the beginning of the bear market. Go back to the dot-com crash. The equivalent of Apple and Tesla, names such as Cisco, for example, they were the last to crash. And after that, the bear market lasted for let's say a couple of years or so, before a new bull market started. But we also have losses for energy. And again, is it dollar related? Is it um profit taking we'll find out in a couple of days or so let's say by the end of the week we'll find out what the real deal here is and the worst outcome of course forget about china forget about the dollar forget about profit taking the worst outcome for energy is if traders are now or investors i should say moving into the recession theme because that will make energy a massive short for the year not just a profit taking target but a shorting target now here's the problem in assuming that today's action in energy was due to a recession theme if that is the case then why didn't we see utilities moving higher why didn't we see a massive rally in the defensives for example why haven't we seen a massive rally in bonds we got a pop but it faded right away. Not all the way, but it did fade. That makes me a little suspicious of assuming that the drop in uh, the energy cohort is led by a recession theme, at least for now. And what's really interesting is, at least supporting the profit-taking theme to explain the decline in energy today, look at a winner for the last year, the ticker LMT for Lockheed Martin. It is down today. Look at some of the winners for last year, the health insurance companies, for example. They're down today. And that tells me that we have at least some profit-taking theme going on here. Now, here are some corporate news for you. We begin with the ticker BX Blackstone. A lot of problems recently for Blackstone, specifically in the real estate trust. But here comes the University of California to the rescue, which is, by the way, another corrupt institution. I attended college there, so I know and they're investing $4 billion in the same troubled trust for Blackstone. Now, folks, if you've lived a day in your life, you know that this is a corrupt deal. This is a, a back room filled with smoke kind of deal with some oligarch who has a connection to the University of California, and they're using the public fund in this case, the University of California as a rescue piggy bank. And then we have news for Endeavor and the owner, CEO Dana White. Well, he got caught over the weekend uh, slapping his wife. And this slap caused the stock to go down by over 5%. The most expensive wife beater in history, costing about $800 million. And if you thought that was bad, wait till you see the divorce settlement. And lastly, we have the uh, silverback Adam Aaron of AMC, another cut leader. With a bunch of morons. He's now asking the company to freeze his pay and urging a lot of uh, other executives of AMC to do the same because the shares are damn big and the apes are getting mad. And when the apes get mad, it's a bad outcome. You might have seen the movie Planet of the Apes. Uh, we don't want to get there. But here's the problem. You think the silver back Adam Aaron is the good guy? Think again. The man already cashed in millions and millions of dollars. He already played you out. He won. You lost. And this is just another gimmick, another phony move, just to convince us that he's the good guy, when in reality, he's just another scam artist. Moving on to the heat map for the ETFs, and again, the majority of the pain in energy ETFs, anything related to the dollar is down, with exception of gold miners, GDX, NUGT, all blasting higher. And while the US market was down, we got a rally in international 
international markets, be it Europeans, be it developed, be it emerging markets, doesn't matter. But the majority of the gains were led by Chinese ETFs, the FXI, MCHI, all blasting higher. So again, if the Chinese ETFs are moving higher, did energy stocks or energy ETFs, the XLE, XOP, OIH, massive losses for the day, move down because we have fears of China lockdowns? Or is it profit-taking of the winners from last year and buying the dip in the losers of last year, in this case, the Chinese stocks? And the last notable mention is for the ticker EWZ Brazil, down over 7% for the day, almost 7.5% um, uh, for what? Pele dying? I don't know, perhaps. But for now, let's move on to the charts analysis and we begin with SPY, the S&P 500. This is a 30 minutes chart and guess what? Nothing happened today. The chart remains within range. Resistance, 385, support, in this case, 379.5, although this is a soft support. So there is nothing to see here. We can read into it a little bit, but that could be a little dangerous. For example, we can read into it by using a trend line. The trend line is still intact. That is bullish until the trend line is broken. But if you read too much into a shorter range chart, you're going to make a lot of mistakes trading here. So we're going to move on to the more important chart, the daily chart for the continuous contract for the S&P. What we see right now is a bear flag pattern. If that is the case, it plays down and we see a flush all the way to the next support of 3720 and a half but i've also mentioned that this is a consolidation pattern asking for buyers before it goes down and if the buyers do show up the bear flag doesn't play out and my hunch is it's not gonna play out because the buyers are gonna show up once we see a recovery in tesla and apple the buyers will show up and this is supported by the way by the RSI and the MACD indicators. They're all firming up. To begin with, it will be motivating for a lot of mom and pops investors who are waiting on the sidelines to see losers such as Meta for example moving higher. And we know that Meta is moving higher not just because they're buying the losers of last year but because of this TikTok ban that is coming or not coming, who cares. But this will be encouraging for a lot of mom and pops to hop in at least buy some of these losers. If they don't, then the bear flag plays out. Here's the cues. Again, no update here. Within range, the support 261.69, the resistance 269.29, nothing happened today. In the morning, we got an initial pop, uh, beginning of the year optimism, whatever, but it stopped pretty much precisely at the resistance at around 269.29, and the chart closed pretty much at the lows of the day. Can we read a lot into it? Is this a beginning of a reverse ABC pattern? We closed the, the gap below, and in doing so, losing the support of 261.69 perhaps, but I caution against reading too much into the chart right now. Wait for the break to happen one way or the other, and then make your move. A break below 261.69 will be a shorting signal. A break above 269.29 will be a signal to play an upcoming rally at least in the short run but here's the most important chart the daily chart for the nasdaq this is the continuous contract of course the chart could not make it above 11,058 and a half aka the june bottom and the most important number for now my hunch is they will give it a shot another one and they will end up succeeding here and reclaiming this june bottom of support again but it will only happen if we have apple and tesla participating my hunch is both will in the short run but this ratty slash recovery whatever you want to call it will be proven to be a bull trap in the long run what do i mean by the long run couple of weeks couple of months perhaps that's the maximum and then we go down again what about the iwm 30 minutes chart for the russell 2000 we got a peak above the important number 174.22 but then of course as we've seen in the spy and the queues the iwm also lost the momentum in the morning and it closed at the lows of the day below 174.22 back where it started, we're not going to read too much into it here. Because my hunch is, what the chart did today is peaking its head above the important number. Could not make it, could not find support to sustain the move. But it will find that support within the next few days and make it above 174.22. So I caution here of jumping into conclusions by saying that today was a gap and crap, a reversal, yada yada. Because all in all, nothing happened today. On to the dollar daily chart what's going on here we've been waiting and waiting and waiting for this positive momentum in the rsi and the macd to play out with a big pop and we never got this pop and the question now with today's move of about one percent or so is this the pop we've been waiting for for now it is too early to say but it is an indicator not to be sucked in into a ratty 
for gold or oil for now. Because when we look at gold, for example, yes, it is moving higher. Yes, it did peak its head above the important number of 1842. But my hunch is this is a trap. If the dollar continues to move higher, gold is going to flush down. Now you could say, but Maverick, gold is more reliable than the dollar as an indicator because you say that the dollar is tricky Dixie. That could be the case. I could be wrong. It could be the dollar fooling us all the way and gold is telling the truth as it has been for a long time. But in this case, this is just a gut feeling. I say the dollar is telling the truth. Gold is faking it because I have supporting evidence. My supporting evidence is, look at oil. Oil is down. If this was a rally because the dollar is down, then why didn't oil join the rally? Is it again profit taking, China related, or perhaps recession related? Who knows? But when we look at the technicals alone, the association becomes, what is the dollar doing? In this case, the dollar is up, oil down, gold is the outlier. We say gold is the one faking it. Because when we look at oil for now, if the dollar continues to rally, we could see this happening. We could see a reverse ABC pattern. Now, I don't think it's going to get this ugly because remember, the dollar is rallying based on oversold conditions, on a reversal in momentum. These are all technical reasons. Perhaps expectations that the Fed will be more hawkish. Yada yada. But at the end of the day, we're going to see a lot of other currencies led by the Japanese yen, the euro, the British pound, all moving higher as these central banks continue to jack rates higher. Remember, the US Federal Reserve was ahead of the ECB, ahead of the BOE, ahead of the BOJ in hiking rates. So if the Fed is going to move into the raise and hold strategy, it's going to take a while for the ECB, BOE, BOJ to move into the level of raise and hold. They will continue to raise because they have a lot of catching up to do. If that is the case, the rally in the dollar is going to fade away and we're going to see energy moving higher again. On to the 10-year yield, the daily chart. What do we see here? It lost the important support at around 3.8, but is it dead? Is it over? The answer is not quite because what if this is a formation of a reverse head and shoulder? And higher we go. So for now, when we look at the TLT, yes, we got a pop above and outside of the resistance slash support zone so far so good and of course the tlt could move all the way to the next resistance at around 103 and a half and then lose momentum as the 10-year yield forms the reverse head and shoulder yields move higher tlt goes down again so we need to see a lot more than we've seen today to say okay it's time to hop back in into the tlt now mind you the tlt is a top buy in a recession theme but it's gonna take a while so there is no reason to rush right now how about the vix four hours chart what do we see here within range support 20 resistance 24.29 now we can do the mistake of reading too much into it for example we can do a bull flag pattern that is now playing out but the assumption of using this is oh the vix is going to move higher above 24.29 what if it doesn't shouldn't we wait until we have a break a clean one with a daily closing above 24.29 to solidify that the vix is going higher spy is going down or the opposite a break below 20 a closing for the day below 20 for the vix indicating that we will see the spy moving higher i'd rather wait and see for a break and then make my mind. Apple, 30 minutes chart, what do we see here? Keep in mind that last week we have seen a false bull flag pattern that did not play out and we've seen more losses to come. Now I believe they're doing the same for the bears this time around, giving them a false bear flag pattern that will likely not play out in the short run because look at the RSI, it is bottoming, it got oversold, it is moving higher again, so is the MACD indicator. All of this is pointing out that the bear flag, at least in the short run, is not going to play out and instead, we're going to see Apple retracing some of the losses here, moving higher for a little bit, fixing these oversold conditions, and then it moves down again because the dailies, and most importantly, the weekly and the monthly charts are pointing out for more losses for Apple. What about Tesla? 30 minutes chart, what do we see here? Yesterday, it looked good. It looked as a reverse head and shoulder formation. But today comes the trap. They trapped the bulls who bought the dip me included by the way and here we go flushed down by about 10 percent plus forming a bear flag pattern now i believe that they're trapping the bears this time around because the rsi is really oversold so is the macd and they're all moving higher in other words we could see tesla closing the gap again at 123.12 and therefore today i did buy calls again and the assumption here is that the gap will be closed again now make no mistake tesla will go down we're just getting started in the correction here in the valuation of tesla but from a trading perspective in the short run my hunch is 
We're going to close the gap at 123. A lot of the Johnny-come-lately bears shorting the stock right now will be caught in a bear trap. And last but not least, what about Tulip's Bitcoin in update here? Not at all. So we're going to move on to the conclusion of this video. And what do we have on the economic calendar tomorrow? We have the ISM manufacturing index, the jolts, job openings and quits, the FOMC minutes. This is a lagging indicator, but still important to look at. And lastly, we have motor vehicle sales. And with that, folks, this is all I got for you for tonight. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. And I will talk to you again tomorrow. Tesla never made the machine like the one I asked for. He never said he had. But well, you let me believe that he had. You stole my money because your funding had been cut off. You've been shooting sparks in my top hat, laughing at me all along while using my money to save off ruin. I've seen Edison's men. Where? In the hotel, and I have every mind to bring them up here myself. That would be unwise, Mr. Angel.